was tremendous. Just thinking of those words, concentrating on those words, he did it all for me. <coughs> so um, I'll look at Gary. We're good with the microphone, Gary? Okay, so that's good. You can turn to Acts chapter 17 in your Bibles if you have them with you. Or there's one in the in the uh, pew or in the seat in front of you or behind you or somewhere around if you don't have one. <coughs> Acts 17, beginning in verse number one. <coughs> now when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where was a synagogue of the Jews. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the Scriptures, opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus, whom I preach unto you, is Christ. And some of them believed, and consorted with Paul and Silas, and of the devout Greeks, a great multitude, and of the chief women, not a few. But the Jews, which believed not, moved with envy, took unto them certain lewd fellows of the baser sort, and gathered a company, and set all the city on an uproar, and assaulted the house of Jason, and sought to bring them out to the people. <clears throat> and when they found them, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city, crying, These have turned the world upside down, uh, these that have turned the world upside down are come hither also, whom Jason hath received, and these do all contrary to the decrees of Caesar, saying that there is another king, one Jesus. And they troubled the people and the rulers of the city when they heard these things. And when they had taken security of Jason and of the other, they let them go. Verse 10. And, and, and the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming thither uh, went unto the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble than those of, in Thessalonica, in that they received the word of God with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether these things were so. Therefore many of them believed also of the honorable women, which were Greeks, and of the men, uh, not a few. But when the Jews of Thessalonica had knowledge that the word of God was preached of Paul in Berea, they came thither also and stirred up the Jews. Verse 14, Then immediately the brethren sent away Paul to go, as it were, uh, to the sea. But Silas and Timotheus abode there still. And they that conducted Paul brought him unto Athens, and receiving a commandment unto Silas and Timotheus, for to come to him with all speed they departed. Now while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. And verse 17 says, Therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons and in the market daily with them that met him. We'll preach a message this morning uh, just called, based on that phrase or from that phrase, in the market daily. I've just called it daily in the market. Father, thank you for this opportunity this morning to uh, preach your word. Father, on this um, solemn day in our country, when we recall some of the um, worst terrorism that this country has ever seen, on 9-11-2001, Lord, 21 years ago, we... Uh, remember and we pray for those that were immediately and, and were affected that day, Father. Some lost loved ones, still remember that day. Some lost friends, lost co-workers. Some are still um, feeling the effects of uh, aftermath, Lord, whether it's physically or emotionally, Lord. We lift them up to you. This morning, we ask your comfort upon them. We ask that um, 
churches across this nation would be a comfort and would be um, something that folks can come to for answers, Lord. And we know that Jesus has the answers. We know that your word has the answers. We know that, Father, because of sin in this world, that evil is in this world, and that because there's evil in this world, that evil things happen. And Lord, we just pray that message of the gospel of Jesus Christ, as it got out in this passage, Lord, to Thessalonica and to Berea and to Athens and to so many other cities, Lord, that that message can get out to the cities in this country, to the cities around this world, that indeed um, the message, the truth of Jesus Christ would be heard. Father, we pray for those in our midst who are hurting this morning. Physically, Lord, we know that there are those who struggle with physical ailments. We ask for them, Lord. We pray for those who have lost loved ones recently, that you would comfort them. Father, just this morning we heard in Sunday school of um, uh, Bill's uh, son and daughter lost their mother. We pray for them this morning, Lord. Um, the cards lost the Nova just uh, weeks ago, Lord. We pray for comfort there, dear God. And now, Father, as we turn to the scriptures this morning, as we turn to your word, I pray that your spirit, as it moved Paul, as it stirred Paul, Father, would not just stir the folks within the sound of my voice, but it would uh, fill me, would empower me to uh, preach your word, Father, with boldness as the happened in the scriptures, Lord, with accuracy, Lord, and that it would be your words that come forth this morning. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. It's been, um, I don't know, almost a year, uh, 10, 11 months since I last preached um, in this pulpit. And I look back and I had preached um, every other Sunday for three weeks during October, November time frame. And I took a chapter of Acts, Acts chapter 1, Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 3. If you recall, during those odd weeks, um, Paul Parent, I saw him somewhere, was, um, was preaching like a verse of the book of Jude. And we were wondering, you know, if, if he was going to get through the shortest book um, faster than I was going to get through almost the longest book in the New Testament. But, uh, but anyway, uh, other preachers came and filled, and we got an interim, and, and, um, and I was done after three weeks of, Paul, uh, of Acts. So I thought about going to Acts chapter 4, um, which had some uh, uh, great applications, um, you know, being spirit-filled to give out the gospel with boldness, you know, not having a polished message. They were ignorant and unlearned men, the Bible says. Um, and, of course, that great verse in Acts 4 and verse 12, um, uh, which I can't um, quote for you right now. Neither is there salvation any other. That's how it starts out. For there is none other name under heaven given, given among men whereby we must be saved. Acts chapter 4 um, and verse 12. And so maybe another time I'll develop that um, into a message. But, um, but today, Acts chapter 17, uh, Paul is on his uh, second missionary journey. If you're in Acts 17, just turn back a page or two in your, um, <coughs> in your scriptures to Acts uh, 15. Uh, let's see, what do I have up here? Oh, okay, sorry. So there's the verse, um, uh, our text verse this morning, and then um, our context. There it is. Um, so Acts 15, and look at verse uh, 36. <coughs> the Bible says, and some days after, Paul said unto Barnabas, Let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. It's pretty clear that Paul and Barnabas, who were commissioned in Acts chapter 13 um, by the church to go out and effectively evangelize, establish churches through the area of Asia Minor. I'll have a map up here in a, in a few minutes. Um, but they went to many of those cities, started churches, uh, came back, and now Paul says to Barnabas, let's go back to the, let's visit those churches. Let's see how they're doing. Um, uh, so they did. And then um, <coughs> while they're there, if you turn over to, uh, so they went and they started doing that. Um, turn over to Acts 16. 
in verse 6, so again, they've gone through a couple cities, Derby, Lystra, Acts 16, 1, it says, um, Lystra, Iconium, verse 2. So they're in various cities where they had been before. Now in verse 6, now when they had gone through Phrygia and the region of Galatia and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia, wow, Holy Ghost says, hang on, don't continue effectively in Asia. Asia is basically the country of Turkey today. Um, verse 7, after they were come to um, Mysia, I'm going to say, maybe it's Mysia, they essayed to go uh, into uh, Bith uh, Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered them not. Again, the Spirit says, no, don't go to Bithynia. And they, passing by um, uh, Messiah came down to Troas. Verse 9, And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia. It's not in Asia Minor. We'll talk about where that is in a minute. And prayed to him, saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. Verse 10, And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel um, unto them. So Paul sees this vision, um, a man from Macedonia. You may have wondered, or, or maybe you knew, when you sang that song, Send the Light, verse 2 says, we have heard the Macedonian call today. If you don't know why you sang that, those words, well, that's why. It's referencing back to this passage in Acts chapter um, in Acts chapter 16, where the Macedonian call, which is the call of Paul to go out to the Gentiles in Macedonia, which is basically modern-day Greece, right? They're not, there's not many Jews. There were Jews there, but, but they went to Macedonia. He went to effectively get the gospel to the whole world, right? So, um, so that's the idea about sending the light to the whole world, why that, um, why that passage is used. So uh, Paul is sensitive to that spirit. The Bible says in Romans 8, 14, as many as are led of the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Um, Matthew 4 and verse 1, right? Even Jesus, the Bible says, was led up of the spirit into the wilderness. So Paul is sensitive to that Holy Spirit, and, and, and he's sensitive to it, and he, and he decides, okay, verse 16, I'm going to uh, uh, continue on, chapter 16, verse 11. Therefore, loosing from Troas, we came with a straight course uh, to, boy, I shouldn't have read there these verses, to Samo, uh, Samothrakia, um, and the next day unto Neapolis, and from thence to Philippi, which is, which is the chief city of that part of Macedonia, and a colony. And we were there in that city abiding certain days. So they... Uh, eventually end up in Philippi. The rest of chapter 16 is in Philippi. You know the story of the Philippian jailer, right? They end up preaching, get thrown into jail in Philippi. The jailer um, gets miraculously saved. Uh, they, they come out of that jail, and it comes out and then asks that very, very famous question in Acts uh, 16 and verse 30, if you look down there. Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And their answer was, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. So um, so a very famous passage in Acts 16. So they finish in Philippi, and now they come to Acts 17, where our passage starts. Um, now when they had passed through, Acts 17, verse 1, Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where was a synagogue of the Jews. So Paul comes to Thessalonica, and we see here, first what I point out is Paul's uh, customary approach when he comes to a new place in getting his gospel message out. Um, verse 2, it says, And Paul, as his manner was. So Paul had a certain manner. Some translations say custom. As his custom was. A as he, he, ha he had this common approach um, uh, to, getting out, uh, to getting out the gospels. Um, what did he do? First of all, he, um, oh, there it is, verse 2. Uh, he went to where the Jews were. 
the Bible says in other passages to the Jew first and also to the Greek, right? Paul was commissioned. Uh, the apostles were commissioned to get the gospel out. We looked this morning in Acts in Sunday school in Acts chapter 1. Um, they were to start in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the other parts of the earth. So, um, so he generally went into the synagogue. And we're going to see that, that, he's, that over and over again in the book of Acts, he went to the synagogue, went where the Jews were. Um, also in his approach, he used the scriptures. Now, he didn't have the New Testament scriptures that were written, but he had the Old Testament, and there's plenty of scriptures. If you don't know scriptures in the Old Testament that talk about Jesus Christ, there's plenty that prophesy of his coming, prophesy of his death on the cross, prophesy that. So he went back and used the scriptures. Um, right, he reasoned with them, the Bible says, um, out of the scriptures. I'm looking at 16, no, chapter 17. Um, uh, reasoned with them out of the scriptures in verse 2. Verse 3, opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead. So he preached the gospel, made sure he got out that gospel message that Jesus Christ died on the cross, Jesus Christ rose again from the dead. Um, um, getting that gospel message out. He, he, he basically, um, that, that phrase, opening and alleging, he, he basically unpacked it. That's the opening. He unpacked the gospel message, and then he, alleging is literally a word that means to place it beside them. So he, he unpacked it, and he put it beside them, and he said, here it is for you to believe. It, you know, Paul wasn't forcing the gospel. Paul, wasn't, Paul went out, and, and he gave the gospel out, Left it for them, um, <clears throat> left it for them to believe. So, so for them to believe what that death, burial, and resurrection of the gospel. Verse four, and some of them believed, and consor and consorted with Paul and Silas, and of the devout Greeks, a great multitude, and of chief women, not a few. So went a little bit. Yeah. So he saw converts. Um, um, and by the way, not just they didn't just believe. Although that's the first point. In, in, in that's, that's part of salvation, right? You trust in Jesus Christ. You believe in him to be Savior. But the Bible says, and they consorted with Paul and Silas. They, they associated with, they joined um, uh, Paul. They, they Not just making a profession and then continuing in their idolatrous ways, but they actually um, repented from that idolatry, changed their direction, and said, okay, we're going to, we're going to be followers of Paul and Silas. Not only did he see converts, but he saw opposition as well. Um, we read verses 5 through 10. Um, but when the Jews, which believed not, so some didn't believe, not only did he, they didn't believe, but opposition. They moved with envy. They took certain lewd fellows of the baser sort and gathered a company and, um, and all the city and great uproar and insulted the house of Jason and when they found them not, they drew Jason. And so, so they're looking for the apostles. They went to this man's house and they're looking for the apostles. And, and um, verse number eight, and they troubled the people and the rulers of the city when they heard these things. When they taken security of Jason and of the others, they let them go. And the brethren immediately sent Paul and Silas by night unto Berea. So got opposition. Okay, time to go on uh, to another city. What do they do in Berea? He repeats the same method. Just look at it. Verse number um, uh, verse number 11, uh, verse number 10, where he went, uh, again, he went where the Jews were. It says, And the brethren immediately sent Paul away by night to Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. Again, let's start where the Jews are. Going to the synagogue of the Jews. Um, using scriptures. Now, it doesn't say that he used the scriptures, but the Bible says in verse 11, these were more noble than those of, Seth of Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily. So they're saying, okay, Paul is saying this to us out of scripture. He probably doesn't have a copy of the Old Testament with them. I mean, that, that was rare, not to mention he's, he tried, right? it's not like us today where you know we just get at our phone and look at it on our phone right Paul didn't have that so most of it was probably in his head in his 
because he knew the Old Testament scriptures, he, he, he was very learned in the Old Testament himself. So he probably had it in his head. So then what did they do? They looked at, at the Bible. They said, okay, is what he's saying? Let's search. Let's, let's see what he's saying. So again, using the scriptures. Um, um, and then he saw converts. Look at verse number uh, 12. Therefore, many of them believed, also of the honorable women. Um, uh, okay, okay, so they checked out his words. Verse 12, he saw converts. Many of them believed, um, which were Greeks and of men, not a few. And then verse 13, he saw opposition. But when the Jews of Thessalonica, so now the Jews back in Thessalonica that had bothered him, they heard about Berea, what's going on there, and they say, hmm, they had knowledge of that the word of God was preached of Paul in Berea. Notice, the Bible says the word of God was preached. Did they recognize it was the word of God uh, that was preached? Um, the point is, it was. Uh, they came thither also and stirred up the people. So again, making up trouble, making trouble in, um, <coughs> in Berea. And then immediately the brethren sent away Paul to go, as it were, to the sea. But Silas and Timotheus abode there still. So in this case, um, there's trouble in Thessalonica. Okay, let's get out of here. There's trouble in Berea. Okay, let's get Paul out of here. Silas and Timothy stay behind just for a little while. It's um, interesting to, um, to point out that part of, that part of the uh, narrative. So, again, the same thing. Paul goes to Thessalonica, has this. Go to the synagogue. Use the scriptures. See converts. See opposition. Go to Berea. Go to the synagogue. See converts. Uh, Using the scriptures. See converts. See opposition. So now he moves on. Um, okay, so here's uh, uh, the map, I promise you. So, so you can see in the, um, in the right-hand side of the, uh, of the map, uh, Acts 15 is kind of where he goes up and... Uh, into the parts of Asia Minor, where this is Galatia. Galatia is a region, all these cities. Uh, Acts 16 is where he's in various of those cities, uh, Lystra, Antioch, and then uh, he sees the vision, goes to Troas, and eventually to Philippi in, um, in Acts 16. And then Acts 17, he's down uh, from Philippi. It doesn't sh he doesn't stop in Amphipolis and in Apollonia, so it just shows him going right through those. So those are between Philippi and Thessalonica where he um, uh, ends up in Thessalonica and then down to Berea, and then down, uh, as we're going to read, he's going to end up down in Athens. So let's look at those, at those verses. Verse um, uh, 15. And they that conducted Paul brought him unto Athens, and receiving commandment unto Silas and Timotheus for to come with him with all speed they departed. So Paul goes to Athens, and we're going to see in a minute what he saw there, and he says, um, uh, Timothy and Silas, you need to come here quick. That's effectively what verse uh, 15 is saying. Now, while Paul waited for them in Athens, so Paul's at Athens. He's waiting for Paul and Silas. He's waiting, okay, it's, uh, we, we need to do the same thing we did before, but he sees something. Look at the passage, verse 16. Now, while Paul waited for them in Athens, his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city was wholly given to idolatry. Um, <clears throat> so he's waiting. He's just waiting for Paul and Silas. He says, I can't just stand here idly. I have to do something. I have a friend of mine, um, his name is uh, Roger Olson. He's, he's been um, an evangelist missionary uh, for dozens of years, four decades at least. Uh, he's probably older than most people here. He's got to be 80-plus years old, 85 years old. And he still goes out to fairs like we talked about the Riverton Fair during Sunday school. He still goes out to fairs. Um, and I just remembered something um, that I forgot from my message. So, Jimmy, I need you to come up here and take my keys. And um, you're going to get something out of my car for me that I'm going to use later. Um, <laughs> 
that yeah yeah but you're not gonna when you come in you're not you're not allowed to use it on me you'll see what i mean when uh when you come in so you know where i'm parked it's right it's laying across the back seat you'll see it um i think it's laying across the back seat but anyway it's a it's a walking stick so now you know what it is but um <coughs> walking stick is what we use at our fairs but uh but he but roger has been going to fairs but he doesn't just witness that fairs i remember one time he told me he was pumping gas at the gas station and you know the the gas is pumping by itself and he sees somebody else and he takes out his bible and he or maybe he didn't take out his bible i don't know maybe he had a new testament in his pocket and he just asked the guy hey you know he's waiting for his gas i'm waiting for my gas i'm going to witness to this guy and he takes the time and he witnesses to the guy um might even gotten saved that time i mean he just witnesses everywhere so paul is waiting but while he's waiting for timothy and silas to come down the spirit works in him right the spirit worked in roger he saw what he calls the divine appointment to witness to somebody paul says wow i, I got to do something and he was sensitive uh to the spirit let me uh, i think i have that up here so so when paul is at Ath athens first thing he is sensitive to that holy spirit again just like he was when he came to macedonia um um <coughs> Again here in uh, in Athens. Now while Paul waited for the mat at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him. Uh, he had a plan. He had a plan. Hey, we're going to go into the synagogue just like before, but uh, and he was going to wait for his two partners to come. But he but his spirit said, "Wow, I I, I see this this city. Yeah, you can bring it up here. Sure, thank you. I I, I see this um, this city wholly given to idolatry." And I got to do something. There, there's something has to happen here, um, in this um, in in this uh, city of Athens. Thank, thank you, sir. Uh, you can give them away, sure. <coughs> so, um, <coughs> by the way, that that word "stirred." It's uh, I looked it up. It's, it's an old word, um, meaning to sharpen, to stimulate, to irritate. He was like, okay, I, I just can't stand by idly. The spirit worked in him um why because he saw the need he saw that the whole city or the city was wholly given to idolaters it was uh, to idolatry it was utterly idolatrous the whole thing i read this about it um about the city of um, um of athens um robertson states these statues were beautiful but Paul was not deceived by the mere art for art's sake. The idolatry and sensualism of it all glared at him. The superstition of this center of Greek culture was depressing to Paul. Um, Pos oh boy. Um, Pausanias says that Athens had more images than all the rest of Greece put together. Pliny states that at the time of Nero, Athens had over 30,000 public statues, besides countless private ones in the homes. Petronius sneers that it was easier to find a lowercase god than a man in Athens. Every gateway or porch had its protecting god. <coughs> Paul looked around and said, wow, there's a need here. And I just think when I walk around, I may not see, I mean, sometimes I see it. I see people with their statues on their porches or that they worship, but, but nothing like Athens. But people worship other things these days. People um, have their own idols these days. Uh, when I look around, what do I see when I come into contact with somebody's eyes? when I look at somebody that I pass by on the street, is my spirit stirred like Paul's was when he saw this? Does my heart stir or am I apathetic? Am, am I able to see somebody maybe sitting at that gas pump and want to start a conversation with them? I didn't this morning when I pumped gas. My mind was on other things, but, but maybe my spirit should have been sensitive to somebody else next to me um, because what did Paul do? He started a conversation. Look at verse 17. Um, Therefore, disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews. So he starts out with the Jews. And then, 
Um, uh, hang on, before I do that. Um, so therefore disputed he, the Bible says, in the synagogue. So, he, so that word disputed, it's an interesting word. It really, um, <coughs> it's the word where we got our word dialogue from. It's kind of a word, dia, laga. Laga means to speak, dia means through. So it's, so it's literally, we, we get a dialogue from it. It, it. it literally just means to, to discuss thoroughly, to get a thorough discussion of the matter. Um, it's, the same, it's the same word in Acts 17 and verse 2 where it says he reasoned with them out of the scriptures. Same word um, where he says that he um, disputed. Acts 18, if you look, uh, Acts 18, verse 4. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded the Jews. In, uh, Acts 18, and verse 9. And he came to Ephesus and left them there. But he himself entered into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. So you see the pattern? Every city he's going to, starting in the synagogue, reason, dialogue, dispute thorough conversation. Acts 19 and verse 8. And he went to the synagogue and spoke boldly for a space of three months, disputing and persuading. That's that word. Reason, dialogue, thorough conversation. Um, so, so he started out in the synagogue with the Jews, with the devout persons, the Bible says. So Paul starts out with the same crowd he would normally initiate a conversation with. That word devout person literally means the ones who are worshiping. So, so, so he starts out in the synagogue, but then um, he changes his custom. The Bible says, um, and in the market daily with them that met him. I said, what is the market? Um, it's interesting. The, the original word in the original language is agora, and there's actually ministries if you look on the web that are called agora ministries which are marketplace ministries so so it, it's a thing um and by the way one of them is or, or one method is what we do with the the walking stick at the um at the fairs but um um but he he goes to that market and by the way that word is used several times um mark matthew 20 and verse 3 it says he went out about the third hour and saw others sitting idle in the marketplace. That's that parable of, um, of the workers. Where it, so that's the same word, marketplace, market, marketplace. It's used uh, six or eight or ten times in the, um, um, in, in the Scripture. And literally it means, uh, I'm sorry, and he met with them. And he met with them in the marketplace. That's an interesting word. It means meeting with anybody he chance came about with them in the marketplace. He had seen something in the city, a, a city completely idolatrous, so he says, I can't wait for Paul and, uh, or for Silas and Timothy, Timothy to arrive. I'm going to go down into the, the town square, into the place where the people are. Right? After, the, after he went to the guy, I, I'm going I'm to find them, and, and whoever comes by me, I'm going to start a message. And by the way, he got lots of reactions. Look what he got, verse 18. Certain of the philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stoics encountered him. Let's see, what do I have here? Um, uh, and with them, they met him. And they responded, um, okay, in a couple ways. Verse 18, some of them said, um, uh, what did this babbler say? Um, he seemed to be a setter forth of strange gods. So he said, oh, those are strange gods. He's a babbler, strange gods. Um, because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. And they took him and brought him unto um, Ariac um, Ariopagus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine, where thou speakest, is? So now some of them said, Oh, tell us more. We want to know, what, what is this? this? This new doctrine, which is somebody rising from the dead. What is this, what is this all about? which led, by the way, to Paul preaching that great uh, message on Mars Hill where he preaches to them and he sees, um, and he sees um, uh, many get saved. So what do we, how do we apply what we learned this morning, what we preached um, 
uh, this morning. Oh, and by the way, um, um, <coughs> when, he, when he preached that, oh, if you look down at, ver- after he preached that message, uh, which you're not going to go through, uh, look at verse number 32. Um, he says, and when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, so there it is, that, that's, the, that's the key, that's the make or break, this rising from the dead, all throughout the book of Acts, we see the same thing. Um, some mocked, and others said, we will hear thee again of this matter. Some mocked, and some said, yeah, we'll, um, we will listen. <coughs> So as I mentioned earlier, and thank you, Jimmy, for grabbing this out of our, out of my uh, uh, the back of my car. I, I, I kept this one because I didn't want to give it out at the fair because it's if you look down the end of it, you'll see it's only it's flat on the side. It's you know I don't know I didn't want to give out a walking stick, so this one I kind of keep for illustration purposes. But um, <coughs> um, <coughs> but how can you and I number one follow Paul's example? Um, in what we call marketplace evangelism, getting down into the market, getting down to where the people are. There's lots of ways you could do it, right? You can do it in your bowling league, in your Elks Club, in your uh, pickleball community. Um, I hear some giggles there. Um, but um, uh, by the way, I just heard, I had the radio on this morning and I don't know, some guy was talking to somebody else about some sports story he's got, and he says, do you have pickleball equipment there yet? And uh, that's the new big thing. Uh, but anyway, uh, wherever you are, um, um, going to the marketplace on October 7th, 8th, and 9th this year is the Riverton Fair. We're going to be going to the Riverton Fair. And, and we have this um, walking stick ministry. And simply, all we do is we, we offer folks a free walking stick if they hear the the gospel message, and we give out the gospel message with these uh, four beads. There's a gold bead, which represents heaven. And we find out if somebody understands what heaven is. There's the dark bead, which represents sin, which keeps us from um, uh, heaven because God has made a perfect heaven. We can't make it to heaven. There's the red bead, which represents the blood of Jesus. He died on the cross to forgive us of all of our sins, to to um, allow us that opportunity to be saved. There's the white bead, which one receives the cleansing, the forgiveness when they place their faith in Jesus Christ for that death uh, that he did on the cross. And then there's the green bead, which uh, represents the uh, growing in Jesus Christ, which was, which one does after he's saved. That's the quick 45-second uh, version of the... Um, uh, of the message. By the way, if you want to hear it in full, um, be here for Sunday school. Uh, be here for Sunday school anyway, but, um, but the next time I teach Sunday school, we'll be, uh, we'll be going through the walking stick ministry and going through how I maybe answer questions as we go through it. We'll go answer questions from others, how they go through it. Um, and by the way, this message of salvation is not limited to the fairground. If you're here this morning and you say, wow, I've never placed my, yeah, I know about heaven, but I don't know for sure I'm going there. Well, you can know. You can know the message that the beads gives. It's just an illustration, or or, or it's just a a, a tool that we use to give out the gospel message. The gospel message comes from God's word. And God's word shows you clearly how you can know you have eternal life. So if you're not sure, you can be sure today. Secondly, (coughs) for those of you who are saved, for those of you who have um, been washed in the blood of the Lamb, as we sang earlier, (coughs) will I allow God's Spirit to lead me to guide me, does he want me to participate in this ministry? In this, mar- you know, Paul was all set. <clears throat> I'm going to do my same plan. I'm going to go down, go to the synagogue. I'm going to go to the Jews. I'm going to dispute, and I'm going to get beaten up, and I'm going to leave. I'll go to another city, and that's what's happened. That's what you're right. He did it in Thessaloniki. He did it in Berea. He's going to do it in Athens, and then the Spirit said, "Wait a minute. 
I need to go somewhere else. I need to do something different. I need to go into this marketplace. I need to just reach these people potentially one-on-one. -on -one. He's talking to them until they finally get together and said, hey, we want to hear more. That's when they gave him the audience to preach unto them. Folks, if you've, <coughs> if you've never been part of giving out the gospel at the fair, I encourage you. It is such, a, um, it's such an exciting time, really. Uh, to be, yeah, it can be nervous and people can ask you questions that you don't know, but that's not, the, the point is you are just there to be a vessel for Jesus Christ to give out the gospel to others that may have never heard and may never come into a church. Thousands, you know, you know I don't know what percentage it is of people that never don the doors of a church to hear a message, hear me preach, or turn on a Christian radio station or read their Bible or something to find the message of salvation. But they're out there at the fair. They're out there in, in the town square, in the marketplace. And being part of it, going there is what Paul did. Going there is what we're, what we're modeling, or what Paul modeled for us and what we're doing in the marketplace at the Riverton Fair. <coughs> You say, I wonder who actually works at the fair when we've done we've done this for half a dozen years. Well, come out and see. Be part of it. <coughs> you say, Yeah, I've already decided to be part of this ministry. Um, but I'm not sure what to do. I, I'm not sure how to do it. Well, do you have a method to share to God? Right? Paul had a method. Paul said, Hey, here's how I do it. I go to the Jews, I use the scripture, I see believers basically his method <clears throat> um, <clears throat> he asked the spirit to guide him always you see how the spirit guided him he included the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ when when he when he used his message so 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 the message is here in the beads right that's the method we use at the fair and just make sure that you're guided by the spirit you're supporting it with scripture and that and, and that the the resurrection of Jesus Christ is prominent and basically you got your method matter of fact one of my favorite aspects of the fair ministry is when it's a little slow and I get to hear someone else give out the gospel if I'm sitting there and you know when pastor McNally was here and he's giving out the gospel or Becky or Maureen or you know whatever they they're giving out the gospel and I listen to how they do it and I say why well, I never thought about saying it, or when the person asks this, they answer that question. And it's great just being able to listen to somebody else's, um, <clears throat> somebody else's method of giving out the gospel. And by the way, as I mentioned, you know my whole method, um, I'll do that next time I teach Sunday school. And you say, yeah, I'm saved, and I'm planning to participate, and I know my presentation, and I know how to give it out. Um, well, what if God changes my course, like he did with Paul, right? Paul, right? Paul had a planned method, and then God changed his course to do this. Well, that's where we need to be ready always to give an answer to every man. Right? That, that's the tough part. That's when somebody comes to you and says, oh, yeah, but what about this? How can that be true when, you know, how could God be true when evolution is true? And they've proven it to be true, and you say, okay. You know, or how can that be true? And or what about all these other world religions? Or how can Jesus be the only way? How could that? What about this part? You know, and oh, question and question and question and question. In Proverbs twenty, I like to rely on Proverbs twenty and verse twenty-two, or use that. Have not I written to thee excellent things and counsels of knowledge, uh, that I might make thee to know the certainty of the words of truth, that thou mightest answer the words of truth to them that send unto thee. So I need to be able to answer. And sometimes it takes a little more studying. It takes a little more preparation takes a little more of, the, of a leaning on the holy spirit but our purpose is not to have an argument it's to get the gospel out i just read this morning i try to read a proverbs every morning and proverbs uh, today being the 11th day of the month proverbs 11 i think it's verse 30 says he that winneth souls is wise 
So Proverbs is a, is, a, is a book on wisdom, and that's one of the wise things to do is to is to reach out to others and win souls um, for Jesus Christ. Oh, boy, I left my I left my other phone in my bag. Well, that's all right. Um, I'll paraphrase, but um, but um, <coughs> last year. Um, um, when I was at the fair or after the fair, I got a text from somebody. And if this person wants to reveal themselves, then they can afterward. But um, but this person said, I was at the fair um, all morning, and I wonder why God wanted me here. Nobody came by. Uh, again, I'm paraphrasing. I wasn't going to read it directly off my phone. But um, And then... Uh, I think it was two people came by, and I shared the gospel, and they both prayed, and they both got saved, and they were excited, and I was so excited, and it was just the best part. And, folks, that is like one of the best parts of the fair ministry is when you can lead another person to Jesus Christ. Not only exciting for them because they just got passed from death unto life, but you have the, um, have the uh, privilege of being the vessel that God used to lead someone else. Christ, to be able to send that light. You heard the Macedonian call, and you're able to send that light and give that out to someone else. In a few minutes, we're going to sing. We're going to close with a hymn, uh, 247. It's really just a chorus. We're going to sing it over a couple times. Uh, Spirit of the living God, <coughs> fall fresh on me. Where We're going to sing as a prayer to God. Um, melt me, mold me, fill me and use me. So I encourage you this morning, ask God, how does he want to melt you, to mold you, to fill you, and to use you in this effort? Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word this morning. Thank you for the opportunity to look at this passage. And Father, as we go out into the marketplace of your world, whether it's our workplace, or our school, or our um, uh, anywhere we're around other people outside of a church, quote-unquote, Christian environment, may we be sensitive to your spirit to be able to start a conversation, to be able to give out the gospel of Jesus Christ, and then let your spirit work, let your spirit do its work in the heart of those who are listening. Father, may your spirit work now in each of us as we look to uh, be used of you. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> it's two four.